Today I'm going to try to answer a question that I get asked a lot, which is how do I practice compas? And this is a tough one because there's a lot of aspects to compas. And as we know, the word itself even has a bunch of meanings. But I kind of take this to mean how do I feel more comfortable feeling and hearing the time? And also, how do I feel more comfortable sort of improvising the compas as I play it and not, you know, sort of getting lost in there? Uh, and they're all really related. So we're going to basically talk about practicing your compas. The basic strategy that I'm proposing here is that you identify and really get to know each sort of subset of compas that exists within a different palo. So, for example, in Soleá, we're going to look at the kind of compás that does one, two, three, rest, 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 seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to think of that as a category, no matter how I get to F on three, or, you know. These are all just ways of getting to F, and then... I'm eventually going to do some variation of seven, eight, nine, ten, right? It might be seven, eight, nine, ten. And as you get a little more advanced, you're going to learn ones that don't even start on seven or even on six. They'll start a lot earlier or a lot later. But it's still the basic idea is one, two, three, bum, 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 ten. That's one kind of compas. The escobilla feel. It's still solea. The underlying infrastructure is the same, but it feels a little different. And as you get to know that one, once you've gotten to know the first ones that we were just looking at, you'll start to see what they have in common, which is, of course, the infrastructure, the thing that's under all of it. And this is what we're doing. We're becoming familiar with all the different ways to express the compas of solea. But you really have to spend a lot of time with each subset and internalize it as much as possible. And uh, for the purposes of this lesson, we'll look at solea and we'll look at bulerias and we will look at seguirias just a little bit because it has one thing that I really want you to be careful about when you're practicing your compas. The first thing you want to do, obviously, is understand the compas of the palo that you're trying to play. So let's take solea. We know that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve on paper, but we know that in reality it's also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then sometimes, even at the solea tempo, that twelve turns into something that feels like a downbeat. So how do we feel this? I think the most direct way is to take one or two compasses that you really know well first and literally just connect them to one another. So every first lesson I do with a student, uh, a new student, basically revolves around learning these two compasses, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then one, two, Right? So this is lesson one, but this is still the basis of a lot of what you're going to do to practice compas. The first thing you want to do is understand everything you can about the compasses that you're working on. So in this case, we have one, two, three, we have four, five, six, and then we have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we're just dealing with two compasses for now. So what I would say, the first thing is just get used to playing one, then the other, then the other, then the other, and flowing from one into the other seamlessly. That's really the trick, and that's the hang-up that happens to a lot of people as they start playing flamenco, and especially as they start trying to improvise, is flowing seamlessly from one compas to the next will trip people up. So first thing I would do is just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. back and forth. Now you'll notice because we're doing that on 10, 11, 12 every time, 
you can kind of cheat. If you practice every new thing you learn in solea, not starting on one, let's say I learned a new falseta that starts here, etc. If I started on one, it's kind of out of context, but if I practice the falseta from the day I learn it with 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, then I've already put it in context, right? So when I'm resolving from any other compas, I've already built that into everything else I might possibly play because this is almost a turnaround. We keep coming back to variations of that in solea. Okay, let's get back to how to practice the compas. So once we have these two compases under control and we really can flow from one to the other without thinking too much or without it feeling hard, like when it's really under control, then we want to start adding in variations of the same thing. So again, this is what I do in the first couple lessons so in solea. You want to get used to going four, five, six with the other seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you can add anything you know. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Etc. So you're taking any variation you can think of of these compases, right? You notice I'm not going or because those are kind of slightly different feels within solea. So for now, I'm just saying, okay, I want to get to know these compases that land on a strong three and then resolve seven, eight, nine, ten. And what's nice is the more you do these, the more you're gonna feel bum 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 da ka da dum da ka da dum bum bum, which is really how you want to feel it. You want to internalize it in your body without having to count. You know, this is that whole thing about oh, you shouldn't ever count. Well, that's always the goal. You want to get to the point where you feel it, so you don't have to count. But until you feel it, you do have to count, right? So this is kind of the process of counting that gets you to that point or closer to that point where you don't have to count everything you play. You just feel it as you do it. So again, anything you can think of, any variation of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then for example. And of course, another variation of this would be to do something during four, five, six. So we could do, you know, one, two, three, like a Yamada. you happen to do on seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, on all those parts. If you spend enough time with this, hopefully, this will feel very natural. And now that particular arrangement of the solea compas will start to feel natural. And you can stop worrying about it so much and have a little more freedom with it, which leaves everything else in solea. So now you can sort of say to yourself, okay, I've got that corner of this compas taken care of. What's next? Uh, for solea, I would say the next thing would be the sort of escobilla feel, right? Everything that starts on a slightly stronger one, two, three, four, five, six kind of feel, right? That three feel thing that we get in the escobilla, the most basic one of which is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then here we have seven, eight, nine, ten. And we'll notice, because we've just spent so much time doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and all those variations of that, we'll notice, oh, really the only thing that's different here is the first six beats. But the second six beats are the same as what you've just been doing. So now we just have to get used to this feeling of one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever we want there, right? start to say okay this is really just a variation we can do one two three four five six nine ten eleven twelve or we can do one two three four five six 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? They're variations of each other. They feel similar in the second half. They feel a little different in the first half. Um, and I have a video called Anatomy of a Compass, which really goes into depth on these Escobilla ones and shows all the different ways that you can do variations of, of that. So if you need some ideas, check that one out. The next thing I would do is the other Escobilla patterns, right? So we have this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This one feels a little different. It's not quite the same on seven, eight, nine because it's a specific melody, which is basically variations of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very, very often we'll go to the G, right? We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And for these, it's really about how are you embellishing the melody with your arpeggios and are you syncopating the melody, right? Because I can do one, two, right on the beat or I can do right and syncopate I'm doing one two and three four five and six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve it's a variation of one two three so spend time with these, really get to know them. And then of course you want to mix and match all the different feels, right? Because by this point you should feel really comfortable with one, two, three, and all the variations. You should feel really comfortable with all the variations of. You should feel really comfortable with all the variations of one, two, three. Right, what's left? Arrasqueado. So we could say, okay, one, two, feels a little different. Why? Because we're hitting the eight a little harder here than we are in the others, right? Remember in the books, we all say, oh, three, six, eight, ten, 10, and 12 are the accents. But then in real life, it's like, yeah, it feels more like seven, eight, nine, driving towards 10 than six, eight, 10. Here we've got one, two, feels a little different. And then you can ask yourself, what rasqueado variations could I do there, right? I could do sextuplets. I could do one and two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? I could do the, the hammer-on ones. So you might not know all of these variations yet, but take everything you know in each sort of feel, each category uh, or subcategory of the compass, however you want to think of it, until you really feel like you kind of own it and you feel like, oh, if I learned a different way to play seven, eight, nine, it would be really easy for me to plug that into there or into, right? So. Hopefully, by spending all this time with all of these compases, you'll become much more familiar. They'll, they'll become sort of ingrained in you so that as you learn variations, they just feel like variations of something you really know. Now, when you get into the world of falsetas, everything changes a little or can change a little. Some falsetas are phrased very evenly and normally and regularly, and, and they just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, 10, 11, 12 kind of thing. It's just a three feel, but some of them are crazy. So the thing about the crazy ones is that these sort of accent patterns, the underlying structure of the compas is there always. And the more time you spend with this stuff, the more you're gonna feel that structure which keeps everything together as you play solea, even if you're phrasing in a way that really doesn't feel like three, six, eight, 10, 12, or three, seven, eight, nine, 10, you'll still sort of feel how that works under because those of us who are writing music are feeling that as we write. And so 
you know, from anything I write to anything, you know, that Paco wrote, the structure that underlies all of it is the same. So that's what you're getting to feel as you work on your basic compas. So let's just take a quick look at bulerías to see how we would do the same thing. If we take the same idea for bulería, there's kind of really two main fields, and it's really the starting on 12 and the starting on 1. These are the places where people get really confused in bulería. Um, so the first thing I would do is just pick one compás that starts on 12, right? 12, 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, for example. And then pick one that starts on 1. 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, 10. Right? And then really just get used to playing one and then the other. So we're doing 12, 3, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 1. Just to get that out of the way, to get the possibility of a buleria starting on one, um, which happens less often, right? So in general, you're going to be starting on 12, common but you need to be really comfortable with both of those ways of doing it so that's step one once you really do feel comfortable then again just like in solia what are some of the seven eight nine ten phrases that we use in muleria different ways of resolving after doing 12, 3, bum, bum, something, something, 10. That's what we want to feel first. So those 7, 8, 9, tens can happen regardless of how you start the compas. So we can do 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? The second half isn't really that affected by the first half, so you have to be able to mix and match those. In Buleria, the other thing that's really important and really tricky is when you're in three feel or when you're in two feel for a while. And what I mean by that is, in general, you know, again, on paper, a Buleria is 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 1, 2, 3, that's the first half, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then the second half, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12 is 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So we think of Buleria, oh, it's taka, ta, ta, taka, ta, ta, taka, ta, taka, ta, taka. But very often we get into a three feel thing where it's like we're just playing the first half of the compas over and over. And this is where people get lost. This is one of the early places people get lost. As they get better at Buleria, they start to hear this stuff and it's like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. That kind of doesn't compute. So one of the most basic ways to express this three feel is this chord progression that we hear all the time. Right? So what I'm doing is in this case my right hand uh, 12 and 1 and 2. Down, up, go a bit up. 12 and 1 and 2, 3 and 4. That just happens to be what I'm doing with my right hand, but you could also do. And the reason I did it twice is because the first time I got to the A, I stayed there. I stayed in threes. I didn't really resolve rhythmically the compas. So I did 12, 3, 6.
time I played the last compas, 12, 1, 2, 3, bum, bum, bum. Feels like a normal compas, and it also feels like a cierre, like I've closed, I've resolved on 10, clean slate, I can do whatever I want. So that's one example of the three feel. There's a lot of other ones, but this is the one I would start with. If you can really get comfortable with that, you'll have a good sense of the three feel. My favorite example of the two feel is this thing that Moraito and Tomatito do all the time. It's a very traditional thing. I just love the way they do it, which is this feel. Right, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's just a two thing. Twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are tricky. The three feel and the two feel. It's not that it's hard to stay in two feel or three feel. What's tricky about them is feeling your full compasses, right? So, I, of course, we can probably all do one, two, three, 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 all day. But to feel and really just know that that was two compasses, that this is one compass. Feeling that takes experience, right? I can't tell you you must understand this and you'll have good compass and you know what that feels like. You have to sort of do that with the thought in mind as you're practicing. How do I feel? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three over 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And for something like this, I would say maybe put on a compass loop that's going taka ta 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 with your bulerias compas. The last thing I want to talk about for a minute is seguiria. So obviously in seguiria, I also want you to get good at flowing from one compas into the next, but there's this one little pulse, right? It's not an accent, but it is a beat that confuses everyone in seguiria. And it's what happens after the five and before the one, and it's an and, five and one. Sounds simple when I say it like that. Here's the two places it can happen. One and two and three and a four and a five and one and two, three, four and a five and one and two and three, four, five and one and two and three. One of the reasons it's confusing is because when we start a seguiria with a llamada, we start on one, not and. We don't do and one. We can. But generally in Seguiria, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, bum. And then you're in your normal compass. And I'm playing everything faster than a, a sung Seguiria would be, uh, just to sort of get the feel of what it is. So again, get used to four and a five and one, right? Connecting one of these compasses to another one of the same. Get used to one and two and three, four and a five and one, right? Connecting one of these compasses to a llamada. Then get used to connecting two compasses of llamada, right? So one, If you can get a handle, obviously you need to understand the compass in the first place, but once you do, really make sure that you have a handle on that little beat. It messes everyone up, and if you can not be one of those messed up by that beat uh, players, 
you'll be in better shape. Seguiria can get fast, uh, especially when you're playing for dance uh, and in some solo guitar pieces. And there it starts to really feel like a buleria. So one of the things you want to do is feel the difference between a buleria, 12, 3, 6, 8, 10, and a fast seguiria, which may... used to what that sounds like because it can be mistaken for Bolivia, but it's not that. I guess the common thread in all of this is that rather than trying to understand everything you possibly can about the compas, uh, which is going to be really hard, take what you already know and get to know it as well as you possibly can. I always like to say, you know, American kids and English kids don't pick up a guitar and do... <laughs> naturally because it's in our blood it's not genetic we've just heard that song and i don't know why we've heard that particular song so much but we've heard it we know how it's supposed to go so we don't even think about it kids don't play it wrong they always get it right spaniards and gypsies who grew up with flamenco get it right because they've heard it more than we have right so it's just natural for them and we want to get to the point where it feels natural for us so Listen to as much as you can and get to know the stuff you know inside out. Don't take anything for granted if you really want to get your compas better. Just understand where are the accents, where am I starting, when am I finishing, how do I connect to the next compas. If you can answer those questions about everything you play, you're probably in really good shape.